Welcome to the Grace Story Podcast, where inspiring stories are brought to life. This podcast is made possible by Grace College and Seminary, located on the shores of Winona Lake in the great state of Indiana. I'm your host, Dr. Drew Flam. This is the Grace Story Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have Eddie Gill. Eddie is a student at Grace College studying environmental science and an outdoor enthusiast. And we, in fact, are going to talk to him today about Journey for a Cause, which he'll give us a little bit of background on. So, Eddie, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So where are you at in the world right now? (laughs) Yeah, um, I'm currently in Demopolis, Alabama. Demopolis, Alabama. And um, you are on uh, Journey for a Cause. Give us just a a broad overview of what this is, um, the trip that you're on, and and why you're doing it. Yeah, for sure. So Drink for a Cause is an initiative I started um, this past summer to uh, promote diversity and inclusion within outdoor sports, that'd be fishing and boating, um, primarily. It's a boating trip. We started in Evansville, Indiana, and we are making our way down to Navarre Beach, Florida. Um, we started on the Ohio River, then went to the Tennessee River, through the Kentucky Lake, um, Tennessee River, and we're now on the Tom Bigby Waterway. Um, we'll, we'll dump out into Mobile Bay, Alabama, and then shoot over to Navarre Beach. Nice. So uh, how long is the trip uh, in totality? Yeah, so t- 10 days, almost 900 miles. Okay. Um, you, uh, you grew up kind of uh, doing some boating and some fishing, and so um, when did the idea for this trip kind of begin in your mind as something you wanted to maybe take on? Yeah, so um, I've been outside boating, fishing for really my entire life. Um, and then this trip was something that my uncle told me that his, his uh, old boss used to do with his wife every summer. Um, he told me this years ago, and I'd always kind of thought, hey, that might be fun to do. Um, and then this past summer, uh, kind of during the civil unrest and everything else, I was trying to figure out something I could do. And then this just seemed like such a perfect way to touch a lot of different communities um, along the way with this message of uh, promoting diversity and inclusion within um, the boating and fishing industry. So that, that's kind of how that was born. So you had this idea, say, a, a year-ish ago. Um, how did you get from sort of an, an idea up here to the reality of actually being on the journey like you are right now? Yeah, yeah. So it, <clears throat> it started out with, literally hundreds of, of emails, calls um, every single day in last June, uh, last July. And then I reached out to, to you guys, to Grace, and um, Dr. Kata put me in contact with Bill Jurgen, who is the uh, CEO of Correct Craft. And Correct Craft owns, uh, I believe, seven or eight different boat companies, Parker being one of them. Um, he put me in contact with, with their reps and everything like that. Um, and then that's how that relationship was formed. Um, and yeah, so Par- Parker was eager to, to join, um, eager to sponsor us. And then from then, from there was just a whole lot of planning, logistics, um, fundraising. Um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy how far we've come. All right. So what, uh, like what vessel are you traveling on? Um, and you have some people with you as well. So talk to us a little bit about the boat you have and, uh, the people you're with. Yeah. So the boat we're taking is a Parker 2520 XLD. Um, it's an offshore sport cabin fishing boat. They are made in Beaufort, North Carolina, um, and sold all over the country. And then the people I have with me, I have um, Justin Shoup, who is a lifelong fishing friend of mine. We played basketball together growing up. And every day or every weekend after we're done with our basketball games, we head to the ponds, head to the lakes. Um, so he's with me. My sister with me, is with me, Kiarga, who also goes to Grace. Um, my grandparents and then my parents. And um, so my sister and Justin are on every single day and my grandparents and parents are kind of getting on and off at the different stops. And you've got a captain with you as well, right? Yes. Yes. So Parker Boats um, hired John Easley. He's a certified captain, came along for safety and kind of just showing us the ropes. And that's been great. He's been phenomenal. How big is the boat? Like what's kind of the scope of it? Yeah, the overall length, I believe, is around 30 feet with um, with the anchor at the front and then the outboards in the back. I believe it, it's around 30 feet. So um, each day, like how, how long are you going um, each day? And, and give us a little bit of kind of the daily 
the daily ritual, kind of what you're yeah. going through each day? Yeah, so each day ranges from anywhere from 50 to 100 miles, um, usually between a three and six hour run. Um, in the mornings, we wake up, have breakfast or whatever. When we get to the marinas, we load up the boat. We have to set up all of our camera stuff, um, get all that running and everything. Then uh, we'll make sure all the boat systems are working, um, start the engines. And then John, John, our captain, has actually let uh, me, Justin, and Kiara actually all by now back out of the, of the slip, out of the marine and everything. So that's been pretty cool. Uh, but once we get out, we're underway. Our cruising speed is around 30 miles an hour. Um, and then, yeah, we're just making our way down the river. We've had to go through several several locks, which are essentially boat elevators, um, up and down the, the river levels. But, yeah, that, that's really what a day looks like. When we get to the next marina, we, we tie up, um, maybe go fishing, uh, go have some dinner and make our way to the hotel and start working on videos. Uh, the, uh, you, I've watched your videos and, and tried to understand the lock system thing. So you kind of mentioned it as like a boat elevator. I mean, so how does that work? Are you, what are you on? How, I mean, why do yeah. you need a boat elevator? What, what is that? Yeah. So the locks were are put in place. Um, the, the river is obviously, um, it changes in elevation. So, and there's dams, there's, there's a dam at every lock. So as we're going down the river and we need to get from one elevation, say from a higher elevation to a lower elevation, we will drive in what's called the lock chamber. Um, the doors at the south end will remain closed. We will drive in the open doors at the no north end. Once we get tied up to the lock wall, we then the, the north door is shut. Um, and then the lock master will uh, lower the water level. So he'll pump water out through the dam and it will drop us down. Um, to the level of the, the next river that we're going on to. Um, and then the, the south doors will open and we'll, we head out. So, you, uh, you know, you had this idea, like um, what has been surprising to you or what has been like something you're like, I didn't realize when I had this idea a year ago that, you know, this happens when you take a trip like this or that, you know, it's this complicated or not this complicated. I mean, what have been some of the like lessons learned for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's definitely been been a ton. Um, the first being probably I just was wasn't expecting the amount of support that I received um, through the entire process. Um, that we've we've done several fishing events and youth engagement events along the way at these different stops, and um, those have just been phenomenal. Um, and and really, that's the entire the entire goal is to try to touch all these different communities. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just been so much stuff that is. Um, has been new to me. That's probably the biggest thing is just the newness of it all. I mean, um, we're, we're, we're able to talk to all the other boats on our radio as they're driving by and just the entire community as a whole, the boating community has just been so welcoming, so friendly. Um, and, and I expected that, but it's just, it's nice to see that firsthand. Mm. Uh, you mentioned some of these events. So talk, talk to us about what, uh, what an event looks like and what's been your goal with those yeah, so we, we've done a couple youth fishing events, um, and what that what that looks like really is just um, we we line up fishing poles. Um, I kind of give a brief intro to everyone that's showing up, the, the children, the parents, um, kind of telling them who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, um, and then I, I essentially we, we teach the kids how to fish, teach them how to cast, teach them how to put a pole together, how to put a worm on a hook, that that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we just, we fish with them for an hour or two hours, um, talk to them, interact with them. And yeah, it's, it's a fun time for them. And I just, like I said, get to touch those communities and that's what the entire goal is. Okay. So, uh, can I get a commitment from you on the podcast to teach my three young boys? <laughs> how to fish? Cause yeah. I have no idea. I'm scared of hooking myself. And <laughs> I've got three poles. They just sit in our garage though. Oh yeah. That's, that can definitely be arranged. My, my middle son was just asking this weekend, man, I want to go fishing. Um, and I'm like, oh, I got to find somebody who knows what they're doing. So oh, yeah, yeah when we you, can definitely set that up. When you get back on campus, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take these boys out fishing. You can teach us how it's done. Yep, we'll have to. Um, you talked about promoting diversity and inclusion. Uh, tell us how that message has kind of resonated or maybe some people you've heard from, st some stories that have kind of 
um, come to fruition because of this effort you've had to sort of promote diversity and inclusion within the boating industry? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so at, at these different stops, we, I mean, we talk to different people and then um, we, we've gotten a couple of interviews that have been on our YouTube channel. Um, but it's just, it's nice to hear that, that there's people out there thinking the exact same thing and uh, are wishing for that same type of change, that same type of progress. Um, I think it's, and this really goes to show kind of the entire, the entire point is as we've gone through all of these marinas, um, we're now, this is day eight, we're going to be at our eighth marina by the evening. Um, and we have not encountered one other, um, one, uh, one single minority group, um, at a, at the Marina as a boat owner. We like, we, we've seen minorities, uh, fishing and whatnot, but at the Marinas themselves, um, I mean, you see everyone on their boats and getting off and, and whatnot. Um, and there, there hasn't been, um, one, one minority group or one, literally one individual, mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that kind of really goes to show the um, this this whole diversity aspect I'm trying to bring into it. Um, and like I said, everyone has been super friendly, super welcoming. Um, so I think those stereotypes that are out there, um, those can and they need to be shifted. So really about providing access, information, um, and exposure to what is the boating industry, what is the fishing industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and diversity in, within that industry itself. Um, and, and it's neat to see and hear that that message um, seems to be resonating with people all across the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so uh, today uh, you're headed from, you said, Demopolis? Yep, Demopolis, yep. Uh, and tell me again which state that's in. Alabama. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not real great on the whole geography thing. Okay, yeah. so uh, where are you headed the this evening? Where are you going to end up? Uh, we're headed to Coffeyville, Alabama. Okay. Yeah, so a little bit further south, um, almost 100 miles. So it should be about a six-hour run, maybe. Um, but yeah, we've. I mean, yeah, we've been through Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and now we're in Alabama. And then you're going to dump out into the Gulf, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, make your way over. Where's this uh, Where's this journey end? Yeah, so once we get into the Gulf, we will head east um, through the intercoastal waterway. Um, and then we will finish in Navarre Beach, Florida, which is between Pensacola and Destin. And um, any more events that you have along the way? We are hoping for some media events in Fairhope, which is our second to last stop. And then Navarre will do like a a conclusion event, kind of um, addressing some media and that sort of thing as well. Uh, what is this kind of spurred on for you of like, you know, kind of what's next or what other things would you like to see happen um, from this journey that you created? Yeah, um, it's obviously early and, and I'm still obviously kind of kind of thinking about everything, but I would love to love to continue this. I would love to maybe start some sort of nonprofit. Um, and it, it, more so just to, to get our youth outside, to go, go to inner city communities, take kids fishing, take kids out on a hike, um, that sort of thing. Things that they're not generally accustomed to or that they just have never had the chance to do. Um, so I would love to continue, continue this in that way. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, if people want to learn more, want to find out what you're up to, um, follow along on the journey, what's the best way to, to find you? Yeah, so we have a website. Um, it's just Journey for a Cause. Um, you can look it up there, a YouTube channel, Drain for a Cause, all of our social media is Drain for a Cause. Um, yeah, we're in the era on social media, so that's probably the easiest way. Um, but yeah, it, it's all out there. And I've Googled it myself. It pops up really quickly. So if you just Google Journey for a Cause, it's one of the first things that pops up and uh, you'll be able to follow along. Um, anything else you'd like to be able to tell the Grace community? Um, any other shout outs you want to give or anything like that? Yeah. Um, I really just want to say thank you to the entire great community. You guys have been so helpful. Um, I really appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Um, yeah, I think can't, can't thank you guys enough. Well, we're excited for you. And it's, um, man, you just need to be complimented for having the vision and then just the willingness to start, you know, like you said, sending hundreds of emails and saying, hey, I want to do this. I'm not exactly sure what it looks like, um, but would uh, love for some people to come alongside and, and help me with this vision. And I uh, need to see it come to fruition and congratulations on even all your efforts and 
um, continued safety as well on your journey. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in to the Grace Story podcast today. Thanks, Eddie, for joining us. And thank you as well to our producers, Rick Neer and Andrew Palladino. And we hope that you will share or like this podcast wherever you received it from. And until next time, have your best Grace Story today. <laughs>